I just had a follow-up to the housing question. Um, you know, when we were doing our housing element in Sausalito a few years ago, it, it seemed like the, the state had very rigid requirements for that. Mm -hmm. um, and I liked your idea in talking about sort of unique ideas for housing and providing housing. And especially for Marin County, where we have a lot of land mass, but not a lot of room to build housing, right, as you know. <laughs> How flexible do you think the state is going to be with the legislation in letting local communities sort of figure out how to address the housing issue in unique ways that fit into, you know, the geogra geography of their community? Because that's a big issue for us Can in you Sausalito. Say that one more time? Oh, <laughs> yeah. How flexible do you think the legislation is going to be? Because we, you know, last year there were a lot of housing bills that, that were staring us down that were going to be very draconian and allowing development. And those of us in the smaller communities were very concerned about that, yeah. especially a small historic seaside community like us. So, but we have a lot of ideas for, <coughs> you know, unique ways to fulfill those requirements. So there's got to be flexibility, and I've always been for it for Marin because there's a double standard that's applied to Marin. We're a rural or suburban urban county depending on where we are we're also a built-out county and yet for uh, housing affordable housing purposes specifically we're considered urban like San Francisco and Oakland because of the metropolitan statistical area we are in both the Obama and George W Bush administration said do not use the MSA for programmatic purposes it's just to gather statistics but the state applied the MSA with a, a policy goal and the, the housing advocates just want their way. I don't think they're looking at the outcomes because to have that standard applied to Marin has not given them the outcome that they would want. So what I truly believe is that they just want to be punitive and then force what they want because we haven't been able to do it. But if you see where housing has been built, whether it's affordable housing or even um, market rate housing, it's not been in Marin. People aren't really coming to apply for a lot of building permits in Marin. Uh, and, but this has been actually something that we've seen across the Bay Area, where the money is being made on luxury housing. That's where the profits are. And to subsidize an affordable housing unit, $700,000, give or take, on whatever community you're in in the Bay Area. So you can only build, if you're going to have to build some affordable housing with the other housing you're building, you can only afford to do that with luxury housing. So then you miss out on market rate, middle, missing middle they talk about for just regular people need to live somewhere. And, uh, and then that hurts other aspects of the economy. And you only have the very rich and you only have the working poor. And so this is compounded problems. We also are eight years removed from the Great Recession, from the, ho the other housing crisis we had, where you know, people would love to buy a house, but they couldn't get financing. Or they'd love to hold on to their house, but they wouldn't be allowed to refinance because they would have been underwater. And so we have just ma ma taken this amazingly wild swing of the pendulum and uh, and we're policy making by wild swing and so I think flexibility would allow us to plan for our own communities um, and anything that we have going forward I think needs to make sure that Marin is not um, lumped in with other communities uh, standards um, uh, mistakenly or purposely as the case is now just because they're upset that uh, you know, Marin's a really nice place and a uh, nice place to live, and I think that the people do have a chip on their shoulder about Marin, and historically Marin has had some problems. So you're always trying to kind of work out some of those issues. Uh, but that's where my advocacy has been, and, uh, and I've tried to communicate that to my colleagues. Huntington Beach was just sued by the Newsom administration. Uh, from my understanding, they did something pretty bad. So what Huntington Beach did was um, they, we, we have to submit, our cities have to submit their housing elements to housing and community development in Sacramento for approval. Did we zone for the housing that we need to have uh, in our communities? San Rafael always did everything perfectly. Yeah. And uh, all our communities in Marin do. But uh, you know, having been a council member, gone through some general plan conversations, you know, it was something we took very seriously. And, uh, and during the recession was very hard uh, to deal with uh, as well. Um, so Huntington Beach got their approval and then afterwards amended their plan, amended the general plan so that you, they took out what they had been approved by the state. So if you're getting around that, that law that way, I think that's kind of dangerous. And so we need to make sure that we're incentivizing good behavior and we're making sure that people with bad behavior are held accountable for that. Uh, there was a, a great, I think Kate's heard me talk about this IJ story before um, about uh, 
Sandra fell during the, the Great Recession when I was on the council, and uh, they showed that the number of housing units built in San Rafael was lower than the number of housing units permitted by San Rafael. So in Sacramento, the conversation is we've got to beat up on the cities who are the bad actors, who don't build enough housing. Well, we all know that cities don't build the housing, but developers do. So you have to get developers to apply for permits. Then they've got to get approved for the permit, and then the work is not done. They actually have to build the housing unit. So we're relying on the private sector to do a whole lot and yet the conversation in Sacramento is beating up on the governments. Um, and so the other thing is housing unit development, building, and job growth in California was pretty steady going up to the Great Recession. And then as they did the, the you know, financing tightening during the Great Recession and, uh, and job growth kind of faltered anyhow and people didn't have a lot of money to, to buy stuff or couldn't finance it, uh, housing unit production dropped, and um, that is where the job housing imbalance really was exacerbated because things haven't loosened up enough in the housing development or financing and who can afford it since they tightened the financing of, of homes. And so jobs have shot up real high, and homes have not, uh, home building has not gone up as high as well. A great, a very easy way to look at that is San Rafael's population, uh, not San Rafael, pardon me, San Francisco, that other big city, um, went up in, I think, 80,000 in, in population, about 170,000 in jobs. So, you know, they incentivized job creation. They had a tax credit for Twitter. All these other tech companies wanted to be in San Francisco, and um, they needed somewhere to live. So we then all kind of deal with the housing pressure created by San Francisco's job policies. And my San Francisco colleagues who were on the Board of Supervisors at that time do not like hearing that 